So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Hello everybody Hello. and welcome to for oh I heard myself back in my headset there. Hello everybody and welcome to for the love of Paul McGrath podcast. Um, we come to you. We didn't plan to come to you, but obviously news has dropped today that uh, we've got McGinn, Captain John McGinn has been announced, and there has been a change at the top. Well, no, to be honest with you, there's been a change of the person holding the armband, and myself and Paddy just want to really talk about it because I was going to say there's a change at the top of the table at Aston Villa Football Club, but. I'm not even quite sure that there is, Paddy. Um, did this news kind of catch you by surprise? By surprise oh. with the timing. I lost you there, Paddy. I didn't know that everyone else, so you'll have to come again. Can you hear me? I got you now, yeah. I got you now. Great stuff. Did the news catch me by surprise, or am I surprised that it came today? Is that what you're... <laughs> yeah, it kind of came out of the blue. I know we were thinking, like he was mentioned, that it was going to come at some stage, and obviously the week is only 10 days away or whatever. So, yeah, did it catch you by surprise today? Or, and did it catch you by surprise that it was John McGinn? Twofold question, Paddy. Twofold question. Well, you, you might need to sit back there and relax because I have a lot of things to say about this. <laughs> um, did it catch me by surprise? No, absolutely not. I don't think we needed this... Uh, overshadowing the start of the Premier League season. So I think 10 days out, perfect timing. He'll be captain at the weekend if he plays, if he plays. Obviously, Stephen Jarrett thinks he will play or he wouldn't be captain. Um, I'm, I'm happy with it. The reason I am happy with it is, as many people know, uh, I do believe that, John, that uh, Tyrone Mings has a brain fart in his locker. I think without... Having to worry about captain in the team, he can put total concentration into his own game. Should the manager see fit to be starting him, and I th- I can see only positives in this. Um, I don't see any negatives, and I tell you what, what a great man Tyrone Mings was uh, bringing out that tweet today. I thought it was classy. I thought it was just what we needed to hear. It's not about him against John McGinn. It's just. You know, I, ju- I just thought it was an amazing touch to come out and say it so quickly. I'm sure he's a little bit upset over it. Probably a lot of upset over it. But he's 10 days to recover. And, and they're an important 10 days where, you know, he's, he's going to be part of a team pushing for Europe, hopefully, next year. And that pressure has been relieved off him. It's heaped on John McGinn. I don't get that everybody is going all in on John McGinn. You know, that midfield is still disjointed. It's not his fault. John McGinn is now our longer serving player. He needs to be dealt with with the same respect. In my opinion, it's a good, it's a good appointment. I probably, I, I don't like saying that, is, but I'm happy that it's John McGinn. Take your feet down off the table again. Um. <laughs> Yeah, look, I agree with you. I agree with you. I've got a lot of things in this. I think there's a lot of infer- in- inferences being made here. And and and, and look, guys, look, uh, thanks so much, everybody. We've we've a ton of people watching here, and we'll get you some of your comments here. But I'm probably going to answer some of the questions in the comments here before we get to them. But we, we will still roll through them in a second. But um, I think John McGinn. Uh, okay, right. So we we got to look at this in 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 its whole totality, to, total, whatever the word is. To, Totality. Totality. That's what the word is. Um, so we got to look at it in that. John McGinn has been named captain. Emmy Martinez has been named vice captain. And Ashley Young has been named club captain. All right. Uh, and the other two pieces aren't, aren't getting much of conversation. I think it's very interesting. I think it's very telling that Emmy Martinez is vice captain as well. And I will get on to that in a moment. 
I can't understand why Ashley Young is club captain, considering he's only here for one on a one year contract and he's unlikely to play. I think that's probably just uh, uh, to be part of the leadership group within the, within the team for the young people, young players, and stuff like that. So he can be almost like a coach on the field, on the training field as well. Uh, so I can probably see something like that. But to me, it's it's an honor probably bestowed on him as respect for his career and the longevity of his career so far and what he's done within his career, more so than what he's going to do for Aston Villa. So that's fine. I think that's probably more of a ceremonial title for him. I think we'll all agree on that. Yeah. So I think John McGinn was probably the man on the, the field that, like, when you look at it, if, if you're not going to give it to Mings, if Mings isn't going to keep it, and, and I'll get onto that in a moment, why, why I don't think he kept it. I think Gerard sees that a guy out the field should have the captain's armband, and McGinn was the next person, was literally the only other person you could give it to. I don't think you could give it to any other person. There. You can't give it to Bubakar Kamara. You can't give it to Jacob Ramsey. You can't give it to Douglas Louise. You can't give it's, it to Ali Watkins. You can't give it to... The only, the only other logical person you could give it to who's, who's the Cash, best player maybe. we have. With it. No, 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 no. It's Callum Chambers. <laughs> and that's another thing. That feel, like There's a lot of inference here. Well, well, well does Chambers start in, 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 in centre half as well? And you know, These are all conversations we're going to get onto when we talk about Mings. But I genuinely yeah. believe that Gerard wanted a player out the field to have the, have the captain's armband. Mm. Does that mean that John McGinn is going? John McGinn is going to start every game? No, and I think there's a lot of clamor on, on online of people going, "Oh my God, this means this means McGinn is going to start every game, and this is this is going to happen, and now we're going to be this way, and midfield is going to be the exact same, or we're just going to be shit and finish 14th." There's been a lot of clamor online. Emmy Martinez will start every single game. I, I think Emmy Martinez. I think yeah. in a world where where the captain's armband is literally only the person in the majority of situations, it's only the person who goes up and takes the coin toss. I actually think it's pretty meaningless in a world where you've got sports psychologists, in a world where people are paid to do this for a living and they they should be professional and so on. I think that it does have a role. Don't get me wrong. I'm not poo-pooing it. But I think having it out the field is important. I think having somebody like McGinn who literally covers every blade of grass in the field is important. I think Emmy Martinez is the key here, though. The fact that he's going to play every game means that McGinn is droppable. All right, yeah. and I and I think he is droppable, and I think I think Gerard will will wield the axe in him at, at some stage if he needs to. But then again, I th- right. I, th- I think he deserves to be in the team. So and let's not, for, let's not forget that, that both Dean Smith and Stephen Gerrard have both dropped Tyrone Mings, even though he was yes. captain. So yeah. you, you know you can, you can forget about that. And I think a good move is having Emmy as number two because he'll always be there. So regardless, the, the yes. hierarchy the hierarchy is there. So regardless of what happens, one of the other is going to be on the pitch. Exactly. And, there's a lot of people gone all in on, on John McGinn with very short memories. You know, this is a guy, he's, he's our longest serving player, as I said. Um, he has never let us down. He's always put, regardless of his ability, he has always put 110%. And, you know, we, we could see him in a lot more advanced position, similar to what he plays in Scotland. And we could see a completely different player this year. Only time will tell whether, you know, that's pie in the sky or not. But it's going to be a really interesting few weeks. But he's our captain now. We have to row in behind him. A captain is not only for on the pitch either. A captain is this figurehead in the club. Now, I think I think the Ashley Young thing is more an ambassadorial and, captain and, as opposed and, to anything else. And I, 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 sorry to cut across to you there because that yeah. was my big point here is that Yes, we've got a captain in John McGinn, but I think we've got more so, so much more than that. I think that I think what this what that exact piece that you said there signifies is we have a leadership group, and I actually think Mings is still part of that leadership group. He just doesn't have absolutely title. because yeah. I firmly believe that Tyrone Mings has done a root and branch assessment of his own career and pro- like no, not his own career of his own last twelve to eighteen months. Probably sat down with Stephen Gerrard, and Stephen Gerrard is going to probably sat sat there with him and said, "Ty, you were on the English squad." You were you were on the plane to the World Cup. Things have kind of gone backwards since, even though he's a sterling record for England. Like, let's not forget mm. that. He's an absolute sterling record for England. But you need to be playing well with your club. And if you have those brain facts, as you said, and we're not denying that, that he doesn't, I still think he starts day one beside Diego Carlos. He's still my number one pick to start day one beside Diego Carlos. And I know that Cam, Callum Chambers has had, great, has had great games and so on in preseason, but I'm going to say this. It's preseason, and... You know, let's let's uh, and he's had some good games, as I say, in the Premier League as well, Callum Chambers. But you know, the, I, I think Ming starts, but mm. I think it's very much what Ming said and what Gerard said, I think is actually the truth. It's a case of, hey, do you want to focus on yourself 
Is the captain's armband becoming a small bit of a burden upon you? Do you feel like you need to concentrate on things? Because while I said it's only a ceremonial thing, I think it's more important to the player or the players as it being an honour at the time than it really is to the, to the dynamic of the team. Unless you have somebody who's just clearly head and shoulders above everyone else, like a Steven Gerrard, like a Roy Keane, like a... Um, uh, Jesus, I'm trying to think of good captains down Patrick through the Vieira. years. Uh, Patrick Vieira. <laughs> yeah, like we're talking like these mountains of men that like you're just kind of go, yeah, like I never even challenge him for captain because he's the captain. There's no one else going to be the captain there. So I think the thinking behind this was Tyrone, you've got it, you've got a window now between now and November. Do you want to get back in the English team? Well, what can we do to help you? And I think Tyrone is very much into the psychics or into the psycho psychology side of the game as well. You see hear him talking about he did go through bouts of uh, times when you know he was he was having like he, he was doubting himself and stuff like that when he first started playing for England. And I think he came out with that around the time of the Euros as well. He had bouts where he was kind of doubting himself and had I'm not gonna say imposter syndrome or anything because I can't I can't remember exactly what it was. So if he needs to kind of take that step back to preserve himself and to get his get his on field um, situation sorted by maybe getting getting uh, his own kind of mental preparation sorted and stuff like that, well then so be it. I can guarantee you one thing: he'll still be the loudest person in the field when we play games. He will still be the loudest person, and he may still have brain farts, and that's grand. It, well, it's not grand if he does, but you got to try something to help him. And I think this is going to help him in the long run. And you see his magnanimous post as well, which was fantastic too. He said, this isn't about me or John McGinn. This is, there's no animosity here. I'm, I'm delighted to serve under John McGinn or play under John McGinn. And that's why I think that it's a leadership group. There's only three, there's only three kind of positions that can, that can be given out. I think Tyrone Mings will still be held in high esteem within that group. And I think that, uh, I, I think that realistically, there was only one other person you could give it to if you were giving it to an outfield player, but maybe two. I think maybe Matty Cash or, or John McGinn and I think McGinn's seniority trumped it um, over, over that for Matty Cash. So realistically, when you kind of distill it down that way, there are positives out of this. Will McGinn be there forever? Will he be undroppable? I think I see a lot of comments there as well. Will he be undroppable? I don't think so. And that's why Amy Martinez is, is vice captain, because it's just preference, I think, from, the, from the, the coaches that they prefer a captain to be out in the field. They can be around the field, around all the players. But if it comes to it, they're okay with a goalkeeper being captain. Now, I've spoken for yeah. quite a long time there on that one. <laughs> Look, it's, I, I just don't get the negativity. I, I really don't. It's, you know, um, I, I think we're, we're you know, as, as, we, as we say here in Ireland, we're playing senior hurling here now. <laughs> and big decisions have to be made. And, and I, you know, we spoke a few weeks ago about the decision with Carney not going to Australia. This is another. This is another uh, variation of Stephen Jarrett showing his teeth. He he's looking for leaders. He's looking for people to step up to the plate. He's looking. I don't. I don't think he's immediately looking at uh, downgrading uh, Tyrone Mings. I think it's just a case of okay, let's try and help you out. As you said, let let's uh, let's see what we can do to make you a better player, to let you concentrate in your own game. I still think of the quiet games, like like as you said, we'll still hear them. I could hear, I could hear them booming all over that stadium on, on Saturday in, in Australia, and it was, what, 80,000 people there. The, the, guy, the guy is immense. The, the guy has been a great player for us, but so has John McGinn, probably even, even more so in my opinion. Like, John McGinn is an absolute hero in my house. I think, I think my son thinks he's John McGinn at some stage. <laughs> I think he's still even trying to grow a big arse just to be like John McGinn. He's just, like, he, he is a, he's a hero amongst men. He's a terrific character to have around the dressing room. Hmm. And it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for him to step up and be a captain and a worthy captain. And, you know, you, you very rarely see John McGinn get sent off or get booked for dissent. He's very, very clever when he talks to a referee. Now, I know there has been one maybe that I can remember offhand that he that he did, but he's actually very, very... fond of telling the referee to fuck off every so often. <laughs> <laughs> but he's very, very he's clever at dealing with a referee. Yeah. You know, he, he can deal with a referee with a look as opposed to having a go at him. And let's be honest, a lot of the action happens around John McGinn. So when he ends up on his arse, he just looks the one look at the referee and the referee knows he isn't happy. Yeah. He, he he just strikes me, and I've met him a couple of times. He's, he's an incredible person. He's a really, really good man, and I think he'll be a, a super ambassador for our club. 
Yeah, I think what you see is what you get with John McGinn. You know, what you see is what you get. Yeah. Um, there is no fakeness about him. There is no, no. Uh, I'm going to maybe play the media in this way because I'm thinking 10 years down the line. John McGinn is going to be a captain in question of sport when he's finished with football. Do you know why? <laughs> because he's a fucking messer. That's right. He's an absolute messer. And that's yeah, why, he's... you know, John McGinn, if you haven't been thinking about what you're going to do when your football career is over, I'll be your agent. I'll get you a job on question of sport because I think that's pretty much nailed on for you. And I think you'd have everyone in stitches laughing. But mm -hmm. it's not just he's laughing. It's not just his happy go lucky demeanor and stuff like that. It's that I like if you look at him, he touches every blade of grass. Is he overzealous sometimes? Is he maybe too um, eager to get around the field, too terrierish on the field? I think that's a criticism that could be labeled at him. But yeah. with, with new regime, new era, new, new manager, new structure, new assistant manager, and stuff like that, I think it's probably logical that over time it would flow that potentially they would review the leadership group. And, you know, I, I firmly believe that Tyrone Minks has actually said, listen, I, I need to take the pressure off myself to get back to the way I'm playing. You can't go on the internet, literally. And I know players say that, oh, I don't look at Twitter. There's no way Tyrone Minks can type his name into Twitter and not see other fans ridiculing him. And that must be tough for a player, specifically somebody who has turned around and said, you know, that he struggles with stuff like that. And yes, he's a strong individual. You, you can say you struggle and still be a strong individual and still be mentally strong. But if you want to make yourself better, or if maybe you've done a root and branch kind of, um, look at yourself in the off season. You've kind of, and it's come to you. And maybe he was part of the decision. Who knows? Well, we will probably never know that because if it turns around, if if Gerard turns around and says, uh, "Well, actually, Ty came to me and said he doesn't want to be captain anymore." Number one, the fans turn on Tyrone Mings and say, and and opposition fans turn him say he's soft. And number two, then it's, it's well, why didn't Stephen Gerrard make make the decision? And we've just lost Paddy as well, so I'm going to have to fill like mad to see if he comes back in. So I think that that's I think there, there's there's lots of unwritten things here, but what we know. On and on, on the on the face of this, I think it's a uh, it's it's um it's pretty logical kind of decision to make, and uh, I think it's pretty uncontroversial. I really do. I think it's pretty uncontroversial when you look at who vice captain is as well. I'm going to go to some of your comments there, and I know guys, we've been speaking myself and Paddy there for nearly 17 minutes without going to comments, so just want to pop up some of the things that you guys have to say here. Uh, Ian says, I think this is a terrific appointment, our best performing player by a margin last season, according to who scored in Sofa Score, a true soldier. Um, I remember when we sc when he scored the winner at Wembley and was interviewed sometimes afterwards, and he was asking how he managed to get the head in it despite the goalkeeper, and he said, I just wanted it more. Um, and that's, you know, I, I think that you can call John McGinn an awful lot of things, but determined is definitely something that you can uh, you could get he could get tattooed in his forehead because uh, you know nobody could ever call him undetermined or lazy or anything like that. I think that's for sure. Um, and that's what Ian says in the next one. The term the determination and never say die spirit is a sign of a true winner. Uh, Kavanaugh Kavanaugh Connelly says. Uh, Brilliant decision, in my opinion. He's been uh, and has been well overdue. Takes unneeded pressure away from Mings and allows him to kick on, but also means he can be dropped if needs be. I think both players, Mings and McGinn, can still be dropped. So I don't think that that's a that's a major issue or a major worry um, with with regards to this. If people are worried that McGinn or somebody becomes undroppable, I, I don't think that's the case. Um, because why would you name? Uh, because as I say, the, you have the backup plan, Nemi Martinez. I just think it's personal preference to have a, a, a captain out the field, as I've said said before as well. Um, and Tom says, "Good to see you, Tom." Will this mean Tyrone is definitely not a guaranteed starter now? Not that anybody should be. No, I still think that Tyrone Mings is. I think Tyrone Mings starts day one beside Carlos uh, against against uh, Bournemouth. Uh, whether he stays there for the whole year is up to Tyrone Mings. You know, I think it is. I think he is up to Tyrone Mings. Twelve months ago, we would have been really worried starting a football match with without Tyrone Mings in the defence. Yes, Chambers has come along. Ezra Kanza is just coming back from injury. He's looked okay in the preseason games he's played, but I think Tyrone Mings is still is in possession of that jersey. And uh, as I say, if Tyrone Mings wants to keep it, then Tyrone Mings uh, needs to do what's best for himself. And also, he wants to get back in that plane to guitar. I think, and I think he can get on the get back in that plane to guitar because. I hope I'm not offending any of the any of the English football fans that are here, but the centre half positions are wide open, wide open. Um, 
Thank God Paddy is on his way back here in a moment. I'll just give it a moment there just for it to, it to load up there for him. Uh, Phil Nolan says, hopefully Chambers will start uh, will start with Carlos now. I'll, I just said I'd bring that up and I'd get through it before I brought Paddy on because we'd be another half an hour talking about that. But I think, I think it's possible that he could start. Don't get me wrong. And look, to have four people that were, ah, he brought himself back on, damn it. Um, <laughs> I but I think it's plausible that we can, uh, that, that we've got four centre halves that, could, that can start a Premier League game. That's a massively brilliant thing. I think that's a brilliant Absolutely. thing because there's very few, um, like, like you look at Leicester last season, they were rolling through defenders, centre halves, right backs, left backs. And, you know, they had a, a down, down season for them. They're still, I think, the only Premier League team to make a signing yet. So, you know, Leicester City or somebody that might, uh, might, take, uh, might take watching over the course of the next few weeks, whether they get panicky or if they go into the season with the, with the same squad that they had, an ageing... Uh, and aging Jamie Vardy and stuff like that, I think their fans will start to ask questions. But this isn't the Leicester podcast. Um, uh, the face says Chambers in preseason four appearances, one goal scored and no goals conceded. On current form, he should be starting, but have a feeling he won't. Um, I, he, he could very well start, but I, I personally think Jared is going to play Mings and, and, and Carlos together. I would be very surprised. But I wouldn't be blown away with a feather if uh, if Chambers uh, started the, the the very first game of the season, um, and I don't think it's one of those ones that sends a bad vibe around the dressing room because I think Callum Chambers knows. I think he knows that you know. Look, he, yes, he did play for England back in when was it? Paddy you reminded me as well when I was going to talk about the internationals. I think it was back in 2016, 2017. <laughs> he played for England, but Tyrone Mings is genuinely looking to get back on that plane to guitar, and I think he's a very very good chance of doing it. I think he's a very, very good chance of doing it as well. Um, where else are we? Shane Coleman has asked, I see a dartboard. Are you any good? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't put it this way. I wouldn't be sitting, standing up in Ali Pally, but I've got about a, at the moment, I've got about a 70, somewhere between, anywhere between 70 and 70, 76 uh, average at the moment. So, um, yeah, I just don't, I only play with myself. Sorry. Not, that sounded <laughs> awful. I only play jacks with myself. Okay, that's well, all I say. Because I always tell everyone that asks me if I'm any good at darts, I've got the perfect physique for it anyway. <laughs> exactly. Going to be in the Olympics soon. I might might represent Ireland. It's probably my best chance. It's probably my best chance. Um, uh, Darren C says here, I don't care if they make the Villa cap mascot captain. I'm more worried about who's going to score all our goals next season. There will be a podcast on that coming up soon as well. A co- uh, another co- a conversation on that because... Um, I think there's probably more de- more detailed piece uh, around that, and you know, uh, there was a lot of discussion online today before this broke about Ali Watkins, Danny Ings, creation and stuff like that. And I think actually everybody is right. I think there's nobody. Everybody's take is right because Ali Watkins is a damn good footballer. Uh, Danny Ings is a damn good footballer. Philippe Coutinho is a damn good footballer. But why can't we create chances amongst the three of them? And I think that that's a big, big question. And I think we might just have a podcast here to try and trash it out and see. If- uh, you know, try and throw some something at the wall to see what where, where the issues are coming from. Um, because statistically, nothing springs to mind other than we don't play through the middle and off lap. But look, won't ruin that. There's probably a podcast in there somewhere and we might get to it next week. Um, anything else there? Let's just see. I'm going to scroll down here a small bit. Um, <laughs> uh, uh this is an interesting one from Leighton as well. Um, Henderson is, is Liverpool captain, doesn't play every week, never an issue. And I'm going to sit here and say that I think Jordan Henderson is one of the most underrated midfielders in the Premier League in the last seven or eight years. Um, you know, I'm very much one of the players that they rely on uh, in mm-hmm. their times of need and always starts the big games or always plays a part in the big games, should I say. Um, yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, and, that isn't and when you when you get to the the stage at Liverpool, right, it's it's about managing your squad and the managing game time, and and spreading it around to make sure that everybody gets adequate game time, keeps everybody happy, and keeps everybody fit. And hopefully, we'll get to that stage where we're rotating our four centre backs and our six midfielders, and hopefully another striker to put in there to make it four strikers. <laughs> mm. Uh, the face says the fact that McGinn has been made captain would mean we won't be playing a four two three one, which would su- which should suit our players. I don't know. I'm, I wouldn't be so sure. I I I, I want the four three three. I just wouldn't be so sure on that. And the reason I wouldn't be so sure on that is that in Dean Smith's first year we played a four, and yeah, I know we finished seventeenth, 
but uh, arguably it was John McGinn's best year in the Premier League. Um, specifically until he did he get in? Was it that year he got injured? It was yeah, it was that mm-hmm. year he got injured uh, in January. But it's it, it, arguably that was his best best year, and he played in the two in the two as opposed to the three. So um, look, I'm not saying that we should push him around there, but I think of all our midfielders, he's the most uh, he's the most tactically diverse. Look, four three three for me all all the way. Um, until, unless we sign the Ibrahim Sangari or someone like that, it's four three three all the way. I just don't think that we have the personnel. Um, uh, well, I think our best personnel suit of four three three is the way I'm going to put it. I think it'll be horses for courses as well. I think he'll mix it yeah. up a bit when it needs to be. He so he showed that at the end of last season, and now we're having more players in the squad, um, capable of doing that job. I think it will be mixed up a bit. Um, yeah, I think so too. I think so too. And look, you know, you have your base formation, but you have your fluid transition formations as well. So, like, there will be times when we'll transition to a four-two-three-one uh, in 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 possession at times, and maybe even a four-four-two. You know, I think that. That, uh, that that gets underlooked an awful lot and there are those fluid transition formations as well and uh, you know every team has them like Barcelona brought that in back in the Dickies whenever uh, Frank Reichardt was there you know before, even before Guardiola and I think it's something that, that a lot of teams uh, like it's not something that they will it's not something you can really track during the well you can sorry you can track it during the course of the game it's not something you can go on who scored and track that or it's not something you can go on FB ref and track that and stuff you have to watch the game and you have to literally like uh uh you know just just kind of take notice of it or have even the 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 scouting videos or videos from behind the goals and stuff like that to be able to see that kind of stuff not that anybody has those but uh, the transitional uh, formations are really important as well because uh you know, there has to be a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Uh, and sometimes I will be honest, I don't think we've seen that with Aston Villa since we've came into the Premier League. So um, maybe a mishmash between the two of them uh, might might be might be something we might see against different teams in different position possession types and so on. So um, interesting one, an interesting one, but uh, not one that we could sit here and categorically talk about really. Um, other than I think it's still going to be a four three three on paper when we look at it. Um, up, 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 up. Uh, Taiwan says, On what basis would you start Mings over Callum? He can score, defends well, and his passing ability is the best behind maybe Carlos or just in the same level. Callum and Diego all the way. Um, well, the basis I would start Tyro Mings is that Tyro Mings is still a fantastic Premier League defender who has a rick in him. And if we're trying to make the guy better, um, with regards to taking away the captain's armband from him. I still think that uh, that starting him day one is uh, is 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 very very plausible. I think it absolutely is. Like there have been games where Tyrone Mings has been absolutely immense. Like his sample set is way bigger and better than Callum Chambers' sample set across across his across his his career. Yeah. Um. It's Callum Chambers playing some brilliant stuff at the moment, and does he deserve a spot? Does he deserve a chance to start? Absolutely. Like I'm not saying that like. It's not Team Tyrone over Team Callum Chambers. I don't care who starts as long as we win. I just think that Tyrone Mings will start. And I think that he will be given a chance to start to get start the season at, at centre-half. And it's up to him whether he wants to stay there or not. I think that's what it is. Um, you've, heard, you've heard enough of me going on about Callum Chambers. You don't need to hear any more. <laughs> No, I, uh, we look. We do like Callum Chambers. And Callum Chambers does that job as well of barreling and barking and giving out and roaring at the back as well. So, yeah. um, you know, he has all that is, uh, in his locker as well. So, um, look, whoever starts is 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 getting 100 percent, you know, and regardless. Look, hey, if they end up starting t- young Tim and moving fecking Ken Caden and Hessler into midfield and that's where starting team for day one, I'll be as excited as anybody else. You know, same with, uh, if Callum Chambers starts. It, it, it doesn't bother me as long as we get results at the end of the day because they see the, see the guys in the field um, every day of the week. But it is it is important, I suppose, to to highlight that yes, Callum Chambers is is doing a damn good job, and for what we signed him for, what was it? I think was it something like two million or something? Uh, I can't remember. There was talks about free low, transfer. Yeah, very yeah. low. Yeah, pound for pound. I think, it, I think it could have been a free transfer. Yeah, I I can't remember. There was talks it was a free transfer, and then it was talks that it was a. Uh, that there was money involved, but yeah, listen, look, I think that that actually probably could have been our best transfer of, of, of the season last season. So, yeah. uh, uh, don't that me because I know there's probably someone else that, uh, that my brain isn't taking over at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Daryl says, Who is the vice captain? Emmy Martinez. Emmy Martinez is vice captain. Um, is Bailey starting for you, Paddy? Well, you see, 
I think I think a lot of these questions are are relevant to because what everybody is forgetting is we're we're going to see wholesale changes from from both teams <clears throat> because of the five substitutes. So yeah. th- these guys, the like the likes of Bailey, the likes of Coutinho, they're all going to be impact players. There are someone has got to start, obviously, but you're going to have a rotation of impact players in there, capable of changing the game, which which. Is, is slowly growing on me, but I still think we're going to be ousted by the likes of Man City being able to bring on five world class players when we're bringing on squad fillers. Not, not that's that's an unfair thing to say, but you know what I mean. It's it, we're, yeah. we're not of the same quality as them. So when, when it was only three subs, I think everybody had a more equal chance, but we, we, we have to deal with the five subs now. So as a result, I, I think there's a, a space for everybody in there. Um, the one person who's who we forgot the other night and I was my attention was drawn to him was uh, uh, Bertrand Triore. We never even mentioned him. He, he's also going to be one of those impact players. I don't see him going out the door either because Stephen Jarrett seems to have a little soft spot for him. So there's a lot going on. And as I said, <clears throat> I think by the time we uh, we get into maybe our third game um, against West Ham, is it West Ham, I think? I think then we'll we'll probably see a more settled very variation of how he wants this season to pan out. Third, third game is, is Palace, I think. Third game is Palace. Palace. Game, Bournemouth, uh, Everton. Bournemouth, Palace. Everton, Palace, West Ham. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was I going to say here? Yeah, and Sweet Carver, you're dead right. We we, we spoke about three centre <laughs> halves there. We didn't mention Kaza. Yeah. And, and and to be honest with you, I did think of him, but I think that I think he's going to be. He's back in over the course of the course of the, the the first three or four games as well because he is coming back like it's Superman recovery from him. What was it? Eight weeks when he was told sixteen or eight weeks when he was told thirteen or something like that. So mm-hmm. you know, I think that they will take their time with him as well because they've they've bonus cancer at the moment because they shouldn't have him based on yeah. based on what the medical reports were at the start. So mm-hmm. um, and once again, look as I say, fantastic defender. We've got four bang on defenders and Courtney House, who everybody knows I like because he can get his head on anything. Um, Courtney House, we've got five Premier League standard defenders, which yeah. nobody should be given out about. It's just no, fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. And the same the same applies with the five subs as it does to the strikers, as it does to the defenders. It's an opportunity. If yeah. someone is having a bad game, take them out of there. Whereas we couldn't do that before. We we're relying on seeing out the you know, the whatever back four goes out there, sees it out. That's not going to be the case. If we if we decide that Kane Kessler Hayden is a better attacking option to go flying at somebody down that wing, we can take Matthew Cash after off after an hour and, and the same with Luca Dean or whoever that is. So there's a there's a lot of play and I'm not making any predictions about, about team sheets until until like I said two or three games into this. Yeah, well, I'd be forcing you to every fucking Saturday, Paddy, because I'm doing <laughs> team tantrums, so don't be saying things like that. Um, and speaking of team sheet tantrums, we will be doing one for Ren uh, at the weekend. I'll probably come back tomorrow and I'm going to do like a pre-match uh, preamble, just chatting about Ren, the club itself, because they're an interesting club. And um, yeah, we maybe even do do 10, 15 minutes uh, on, on that tomorrow, because I think it's it's an interesting one. And um I'm still trying to pronounce, how, trying to figure out how to pronounce how, what their stadium is called. Um, so don't kill me if I get all the pronunciations wrong. Um, yeah, so we will be back at the weekend with a, a team sheet tantrum as well and a post match for the Ren game, and then we will be full steam ahead towards the week, towards next week with the um, with the, the preview for for the year coming, and uh, also all the Bournemouth stuff as we look forward to football being back properly, proper competitive football being back. Um, I do want to say to you guys as well. Um, we have finally um, next week we should have uh, we should have uh, some some merchandise available. Um, I know it's been a long time coming. I've been tiptoeing around it, but look, uh, I will pop out a tweet about that in the coming few days uh, once I know more. Probably next Monday I should know more. It should be all signed off and then uh, I'll be able to announce it as well. And we're also thinking about doing something to try and get you guys involved a small bit more. Um, <laughs> yeah, keep it, keep an eye on Twitter for that because you guys might literally be able to have your say whenever you want to about things 
uh, all things Aston Villa. So uh, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind because uh, uh, we might have something coming for you. Um, actually, we more than likely. I think I'm going. I think I'm going to go with it anyway. But uh, we'll announce it in the coming days as well because I think it could be a bit of crack if nothing else. Um, all right, so lads. Uh, oh, there was something here. Yes, we're going to finish it on this before we go. I want you all to channel your inner Leighton Castle, one of our good listeners and our good viewers on this podcast. And he says, I want all Villa fans to close their eyes for 10 seconds and imagine John McGinn lifting the FA Cup. What a picture. Up the Villa. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, can you imagine? I don't care. Literally, they could have Mr. Blobby lift the cup for us if we lifted the FA Cup. If whoever lifts it, lifts it. <laughs> and uh, we'll all be in raptures of tears because it's been, what, 50, what's that, 15, 17 67. It'll be coming up between 67 and 68 years since we'll have lifted the FA Cup, and that's too long for a club of our stature, for sure. Um, uh, excellent. Lads, that's going to do it for us today, and lasses, uh, that's going to do it for us today. Um, thanks very much, everybody, for watching. Thumbs up on the video if you like it. Also, if you're not subscribed to our audio podcast, please get subscribing to that as well. Listen, if you download it and you don't even listen to it, that's okay. That's okay with me. You can still come in here, but uh, you know we want to push that side of things as well. If uh, that is something you are interested in, as I say, we will be back over the weekend. I'll probably be back in tomorrow with a rain preview, and then we'll be back over the weekend with uh, team sheet tantrum and post. Uh, uh, there's a lot going on. Put it this way: there's a lot going on over the next ten days, and it's going to be exciting because football is on its way back. So thanks everybody for watching. Going to let you go. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon and all. Uh, Congratulations, John McGinn. This is a start, uh, hopefully, of a great captaincy for him. And he's got 100% got our backing. But until next time, everybody, stay safe, stay happy. And all that's left to say is up the villa. Up the villa.